Hey guys, what's up? I'm Cam. And I'm Alex. This is a session tapes. We're gonna have a bit of a chat, a bit of a yarn about what's going on in privacy, security, tech, digital rights. What's on the bulletin today, Alex? Yeah, well, I mean, it's been a bit of a busy period uh, for all of us, really. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, there were some protests going on in Iran. There were a bunch of slowdowns or complete shutdowns of the internet. Lots of services were being blocked. And as a result of this, we saw a huge influx, hundreds of thousands of downloads to session. Mm. We were trending in various app stores around the world. Which number, two, we'll... number two in the uh, Play Store in Iran, yeah. which was crazy for us. It was a crazy couple of weeks. Yeah, and, um, and various other places for reasons we'll get into a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but that has really been keeping us pretty busy. How has it all been? How are you doing it's been good. super busy for I'm you as well. Yeah, it was very challenging. It was also very, um, I mean, it was an exciting time in a weird way because obviously it was it was all driven by events which are very serious and which are not very exciting. <laughs> but it was exciting for us to see Session being used by people on the ground in Iran in the way that we sort of like the, the in a sense, the real, the... <laughs> the use case. The use case. Yeah, the intended use case. Yeah. The whole thesis behind Session was it'll be useful in times like these. Yeah. And, you know, times like these came and unfortunately in the world, you know, it, this stuff is going on, it's becoming more common and there we were. But this is the first time that we've really like exploded. This is mm. the biggest explosion in Session's life so yeah. far. Um, and it was really, it was really intense. It just felt like, like you were saying, there was excitement over the fact that the, all the work that we'd put in over several years was paying really off in a way, to coming fruition. to fruition. There was this like one moment where everything that the work that you and Sam had been doing with outreach to digital rights organizations that are in places like Iran mm. and just obviously all of the development that has gone into building session and making it capable of being a useful tool for communication in these situations where governments are trying to censor the internet, censor people's ability to communicate privately. So, yeah, it was a big moment, and it's still ongoing. Um, but, yeah, a very crazy two weeks. And there was, like, a huge outpouring, not only, obviously, like, in the App Store um, dashboard or the Play Store dashboard or, like, various places. We could You could sort of see numbers yeah. floating around or, like, you know, graphs that are, like, trickling along and then, and it's like, coming upwards and then just suddenly, like, Big going spikes. through Crazy spikes. the roof. And but this is just the stuff that we can see because, the, yeah. obviously, the session is extremely private and we can't see... Uh, we don't have a clear picture in the way that, you know, other applications do. Yeah. And, you know, things like um, <clears throat> it was uh, available through the sort of... Iranian version of Efteroid, essentially. Stuff like that, that's not reflected in the numbers yeah. that we have, really. Yeah. So even just in that small, uh, well, not small, but it's an incomplete window that we do have into user analytics, it was massive. Yeah, and like we'll talk a little bit more about the numbers a little bit later, but the thing that really hit home for me, I suppose, was seeing not only the... Um, numbers going crazy, which was like cool and all, but seeing like on every channel that we have, like whether it was Twitter, YouTube, in the app and play store, various places, in session itself, like in open groups, this flood, this like cascade of people coming in saying, thank you for making this. Like we need this, this is so helpful for like so many reasons. Um, you know, I'm using this to talk with my family in Iran or I'm in Iran and I'm using it to talk with my friends or like whatever. And seeing those people who had real use for Session and like for the um, things that we've built into Session, yeah, which are quite extreme, but seeing that for these people who were leaving these comments and reaching out to us, it was not extreme it was necessary it was yeah. essential and session was exactly what they needed in that moment yeah and that sure. was so meaningful session is you know what we sort of refer to as very hardcore private messenger in the fact that it has um it has capabilities it has uh, it's capable of things that not a lot of other private messaging apps are capable of and mm. we built it that way specifically for this reason 
we want it to be something that anyone can use because everyone can and should protect their privacy when they're communicating. Yeah. Well, look, and like even even though, because we had spent, you know, probably the better part of two years, not dedicated, but at various times, you know, doing partnerships, relationship building, translations, localizations, knowing full well that session might at some point be really needed in Iran. And that day it happened to come that it was. But even though we'd done all that preparation work, it's still, you know, when you wake up and there's a sudden like 5x in downloads yeah, um, i think it was something like literally like five times the previous uh, like daily install amount yeah, which yeah. is pretty crazy which is crazy and you see that and even though you've done all this work to get ready and prepare there's still like this tick that goes off in your head that's like okay it's time to scramble it's time to like get in there and like there's so much work that we have to still do and you're so singularly focused on this one issue Like, I would rock up to work, and I would work on it for nine hours, and I would go home, and I'd be reading the news. I'd, like, still be messaging people that we were working with, whether they be in Iran or they were Farsi speakers that we were connected with in Australia or elsewhere. Like, it didn't stop, um, and it was just, like, all-consuming for that period I was out on, like, Saturday night, and it was, like, nearly midnight, and I was, like, messaging um, a friend of someone who we work with who's a Farsi speaker who... uh, um, was working with us to translate some stuff. And my mate was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I can't even really, like, <laughs> just don't worry about can't. it. Yeah, yeah it's impossible. <laughs> we were like at the bar and I was like, look, I was just, I'm just doing something. <laughs> just finish your beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really crazy to see it um, be be used in that situation the way that we had hoped that it would. And like people, partner organizations that were in Iran telling us like for some people like what they're hearing is the only way that they had to communicate with yeah. other people digitally which was crazy yeah and we did set up that we did we did learn some things as well though right um and this was one of the things so we set up a one-way channel on session the intention of which was being like okay we'll post news you know knowing that session wasn't being censored and it was a place for people to share and spread information um without censorship And we figured, you know, we'll be able to put news, whether it's from like the BBC or wherever, into this channel. And, um, you know, people can consume it this way. This is like an extra way. There's a similar, the BBC did a similar thing with Tor a few years back where there was a mirror of the BBC website on Tor. Mm. So that, you know, if if it was blocked somewhere or like news was blocked in a certain place, they could still access it through this hidden service. Yeah, it was a crazy learning experience for sure. Because it's like as much as we had done uh, a lot of the preparation that could be done for something like this, you don't really know what's required and what the playbook is until it actually pans Happens, out. Happens, yeah. And so it was just like a really fast-paced learning experience. And I think it was interesting to see that, like, a big part of that was liaising with people and finding out from them what they needed from us and how yeah. we could help mm-hmm. um, help them to use Session in the ways that are going to be useful to them. And the one-to-many channels that we set up to disseminate information like news... I don't think that we had really considered that that would be sort of a primary thing that people were interested in. I think mm-hmm. we always thought about it as just like a one-to-one communication or like having groups or whatever. But um, yeah, that was quite interesting to me that that was... Yeah, but it also introduces all of these extra considerations you have to make. Like you can't, or we as a team at least, can't run that indefinitely. What do you choose to post there? Like there's mm, some editorial yeah, for sure. judgment that you have to make. Um, and like you said, in the end, it comes back to having that dialogue with the people on mm, the ground. Yeah. So you understand, okay, well, what information is being blocked? What information needs to get through? You know, what do people need? What's important mm. right now for you on the ground? And once you understand that, it's so much easier because, you know, from our office in Melbourne, we're flying blind. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it was crazy how much extra insight we would get. Even like you were saying, we were working with people to translate documents and materials into Farsi um, that weren't in Iran. They were in Australia. But even the information that we were able to get from them was super valuable. You know, whether they had... Um, friends and family in Iran that they were speaking with or even just having like a broader understanding 
of the culture in Iran that we yeah, don't have for sure. was super valuable. And like what they were able to point us in the right direction so many times and make yeah. sure that we didn't make, you know, silly mistakes. Yeah. If you are, you know, a part of that culture or even maybe an adjacent culture, you would like things that are obvious to you aren't obvious to us. Mm. And there's a lot of little things that can pan out in that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, it's also one of those things where because of the situation, you know, there was widespread civil unrest in Iran. People don't have a lot of time, you yeah, know, like exactly. they don't have time to sit down with you and have an hour long Zoom call and be like, oh, here's the lowdown yeah, on like what's sure. happening. Yeah. Um, no one has that f- time and we couldn't ask them to give us that time. We had to try and be as efficient as we could. Yeah. Um, with enabling that information flow, which sometimes was really hard. So, like, there was there was one document that we were getting translated and we um, it was, like, for an update that we wanted to roll out while all of this was unfolding and we were worried about, like, changing too many things in the app, basically, um, and losing, like, in-app Persian translation. So we wanted to, like, get some communications out in advance to let the community know, um, but we wanted to translate them into Farsi, right? Yeah, which and we so, did. We which we did. Into Farsi, we did get it and translated into Farsi, and we thought that was the end of it. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately, it wasn't. So we got it translated by someone who had previously done translation work for us that was solid, really mm-hmm. good. Um, but I suppose maybe they were just, like, under strain and, like, busy strung out. And I think maybe it was a bit more out. technical than It was the more technical, like, it was more difficult. Well. Um, so they translated for us. We passed it over to some of our partners to say, hey, can you just check over this translation for us? And they were like, oh, no, like, don't. You can't use this. Yeah. Um, so that's like another roadblock, right? Which you, it's hard because you can't have everything ready in advance. Yeah, for sure. But also like people's capacity to help you while there is a significant event going on is it's limited. pretty limited. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And it's just like an example of something that sort of almost like seems obvious afterwards that like if we can't check a translation that, you know, it might not be communicating things in the way we want it to. Mm. But then it happens and like like you don't think that while you're doing it. You don't go, oh, we need to double check this. We need two translators because we need to <laughs> check the first translation. Yeah. So, yeah, a big learning experience and... Um, yeah, it was it was good to see it being used in the ways that it was built for mm. and put to the test. And in a lot of ways, it passed that test. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. And, um, you know, we've got some extra learnings that we've come out with as well. You know, we are currently looking into more censorship resistance stuff. Um, so that's early days at the moment. But, like, we've got some partners that we'll potentially work with on that stuff and some good ideas about yeah. how to, like, harden the session a little bit more. For sure. Um, but overall, you know, like, it was an awesome, awesome, like, thing to see and to see session be used. Like we were saying, we we were at one point, like, like you were saying, we were the second trending app in Iran. Yeah. But because so many Iranians were using VPNs to connect, because uh, Play Store, App Store were blocked in Iran at the time, so many people were using VPNs, we ended up trending in Germany and the USA as well, not yeah. because of Germans or Americans, but because of Iranian VPN users. Yeah, I think we were literally the number five communication app in Germany and like the number 12 communication app in the US. And at the same time as being number two in Iran. So it's crazy when you think about that because we were already number two in Iran, but Iranian people using VPNs mm-hmm. pushed us up to that level in these other places, you know, as far as the place was concerned with the VPNs. So just like to think about the scale of how many people were downloading it to push it to those places Mm. is Mm. kind of wild. Well, yeah, I think at one point um, there was, oh, and the technical way that this number came out boggles my mind, but the number, like we figured in like a two week period, there were about half a million people actively using the app, Yeah, um, which is a huge number. So, you know, that was awesome. Um, Really good to see. But moving on from Session to another private messaging app, which is Signal. Signal? Never heard of it. Signal yet again in the news. Signal's been making the news a fair bit lately. Yeah, Um, But unfortunately, this time Signal made the news for uh, their own reasons. They were copying a lot of flack. They announced that they were removing SMS support from 
Android. Yeah. So it used to be right that you could send signal messages to people that had signal, and then you could also people that don't have signal can SMS you, and the interface is basically basically interoperable with SMS. So you yeah, can yeah, talk exactly to them from right. the one application. Yeah, and like in the in the actual app, it would like indicate whether it was an SMS or a signal message. Yeah, for sure. Which as you good. would hope. Very important. Yeah, really important detail. <laughs> but that speaks to one of, I think, the main issues with it was that like, despite the fact that they would have done everything that they could in terms of the interface of the app to make that clear, I can only imagine that if you have something that millions of people are using to communicate, that like people are going to make mistakes. Yeah. And the stakes can be very high when you're relying on private communication and if you make that mistake, it could things could go very badly. Yeah, well, this is the thing. So um, mo- I would say most people I saw talking about this were like, screw you, Signal, like fucking don't take SMS out of the app. Yeah. Um, but as we kind of were like on the other side of the fence there and say, actually, no, this is a good thing. And you're exactly right. Like, so imagine you have 5 million people using the app or whatever. There's more, but like yeah. just imagine 5 million. And because it is pretty obvious in the app, like if it's an SMS or if it's a signal message, but imagine that like 4.9 million of them yeah, for sure. are like, well, I totally understand this. But then there's that 100,000 that doesn't. Uh, and then just one of them needs to send some like really sensitive information via SMS accidentally. And it can have huge human impacts, yeah. you know, on somebody um, really quickly. And those impacts can be really severe, and really negative. Um, especially in an app that people are assuming is secure and private. Yeah, sure. um, and privacy by default is something which Signal preaches. It's something which we preach. Yeah, and can... SMS is not not only not private by default, it's just simply not private yeah, at all. Yeah, it's basically like you can intercept it very easily and it's just plain text. You can just read people. Yeah, messages. yeah, exactly. And all like the telco companies essentially... Can just sniff it basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it was this weird, I, I kind of feel for them because like, obviously it's very, it, it goes against the ethos of Signal fundamentally to have an school protocol like SMS built in interoperable with Signal. Mm. And you can imagine they would have kicked this can down the road as long as they could because yeah. they knew there would be a backlash and they knew that maybe your average Signal user who is... Maybe not necessarily like a hardcore privacy person, but they care about it enough to have signal. Um, they knew that a lot of people would be unhappy about it, mm. but it was inevitable. Like eventually, they did have to do it, and it yeah. was the right call. You have to, yeah, as you say, they surely they were they were waiting to announce this for a long time. They you would know, have been. They, they would were, have been like. <laughs> they, they would have been like, man, we got to do it. And they would have been like, oh, but I really don't want to. Yeah, you like know, covering their eyes, suck. pushing the button. Like, I don't yeah, want to do this, man. Sure. You press it. Yeah, it's like this yeah. massive, like, sort of, I don't know, I guess you call it like a PI issue that they knew that they would eventually have to unleash on themselves. Yeah. And then they did, and people were... It's kind of hard to gauge how, you know, how the average person feels about it. Because, like, when you look at, like, the Twitter thread and the mm-hmm. announcement that they did, it's like a lot of people were very upset but that doesn't necessarily give you like yeah i was really interested in how many in just how many people were upset so it was already the case on ios that Mm. um you couldn't use signal with sms so it was only android that you could but Mm. so many people were worried that like oh people are just going to drop signal now they're just not going to use it Mm. um and i totally understand that line of thinking because it does make user acquisition a little bit smoother. You know, if you can say, oh, just use, just change your default SMS app to be this. Yeah, for sure. But really what we should be saying to people is don't use SMS yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you look at competitors like WhatsApp or I suppose like Session and SMS is gonzo. Like it's out of there. It's yeah. like goodbye SMS. Like we've rolled you up, scrunched you up, threw you in the trash it had years its ago. It had its moment. That yeah. moment passed a long time ago. Yeah, and um, it's it's just time to move on. Yeah, you for know, sure. like SMS sucks. There are so many other options which are just like so much better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Signal is one of them. Yeah. Signal yeah. is one of the options <laughs> exactly. that's better. You know, like yeah. uh, so. Props to Signal for kind of like copying this one on the chin. Um, there is flack. And I understand, I do understand where people are coming from. But I think the thing is, eventually, you just have to make the decision to make 
yeah, this older sure. uh, standards obsolete. Like we have moved on. There's really no way to like um, secure them. We just need to shut it down. Yeah. And like, by the way, um, this is just like a, another random thing on the side, but like, I wonder at what point or if at any point we'll be able to escape this like cycle of um, SMS authentication as well. Because if people are kicking back this hard against signal dropping SMS, yeah. I can't imagine how hard people will kick if they're just like, we're not letting you do 2FA using SMS anymore. People you have really to get an authenticator it. app or yeah. like, U- like a YubiKey or something else. People will absolutely piss their pants. For sure. My dude. They'll yeah. be covered in urine. Because soaking well, <laughs> all the way through, you know, their their pantaloons. It'll be a stinky time. It'll be it'll a bad be time. So stinky. It'll be a, a lot of wet dungarees. I think that <laughs> like you can you can see why. Because like even when I have to do two FA, it's like I, I do it and I'm like, I have to do this, but I'm like, just let me in. Let yeah, me in. I am. People me want too. it to be like that. Me and too. so me too. it's like, like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so yeah, that's gonna be a rough one. <laughs> I I think this is like this is laying the ground, it's laying the ground yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I can understand what people are saying when they say like um, when they say like this is gonna make less people use Signal, which is bad for privacy. I can see the line of thinking that gets you there, but it's also like organizations like Signal, organizations like us, privacy focused organizations have to sort of make a line in the sand mm. and be like we're moving things forward. And you can't, like, have a foot in both camps. Mm. Like, you kind of just have to be, like, we're pushing things away from that, and that's over now. And it's, like, you know, people are going to catch up. That sounds... Yeah. No, I I agree with you. And I think that it's sort of hard to even understand. Like, I theoretically understand where people are coming from. But, like, in Australia and I think in other parts of the world as well, SMS is already dead. Yeah. Like, I don't remember the last time I sent someone a text message. For sure. At all. <laughs> like, it's not used. Data is everywhere. The whole country is pretty much connected to mobile data, more or less. Yeah. Um, mostly in the places where people live. And globally, it's, it's a lot cheaper. And yeah. this is one of the reasons why they were doing it was because apparently, like, a lot of people, like relatively large amount of people, had been accidentally sending SMS and it wasn't actually like a, a privacy thing that they're upset about. It was that they were in a part of the world that's less affluent than maybe in Australia and it was really expensive and they got hit with these bills that were really disruptive mm. to them and yep. potentially the whole family or whatever. Yeah, plus beyond this, it's just like who's who's sitting there being like let me send an sms i'm gonna download this hyper private messaging app so that i can send a text message you know like it just doesn't mesh and um they don't they don't match together yeah very well very nice anyway signal if you're out there we got you we got you back yeah yeah yeah. We, we back you we back your decision but someone's whose decision we don't back yeah um Moving on to uh, old old mate, Kanye West. You may have heard of him. You may have heard of him. Uh, he is of presidential candidacy fame. Yeah. Uh, he's also a musician, etc. Yeah. Made a couple tracks. Made a couple tracks. Um, made some crazy shoes. And I suppose potentially tech entrepreneur. The new Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Kanye West in a relatively shocking mood and during seemingly some kind of like breakdown that he's maybe having is, um, the news came out that he put a bid in to buy Parler. Nobody saw it coming. No one saw it coming. Very strange. Probably because no one really saw any value in Parler. Yeah, for sure. I Um, would say that it's not a very valuable platform. No. I would say that it's... Well, as far as I understand, you know, like Parler had the initial uptick in users and then there was like a huge hack. Yeah. Which literally exposed like everything. So you were reading about this before, right? Yeah. So basically, (laughs) someone just downloaded every single piece of content that had ever been posted on there. And the, they were talking to a cybersecurity researcher in the article. And he was saying, like, this is the type of thing that you should be able to protect against, like, if you are, like, your first week 
of like <laughs> comp, comp sci, like right. <laughs> like he was saying like if someone made this mistake in like a first year computer science like I don't know assignment that they would just be like kicked out of school yeah like see you later it's literally like 101 yeah. cyber security if you're running a website or something and so I believe after that the the use was like trickling down and yeah. it, which is, I believe it's like not really yeah, a thing at all anymore. For sure. And I I assume that now that this news has come out, there's probably going to be a bunch of people flock, people who are fans of Kanye yeah. will flock to it again, which is weird. Uh, and the whole situation is just weird. And like, there is a bit of a <laughs> there is a weird parallel with like Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter, and then yeah. Kanye West is yeah. like, I want one of those too. <laughs> I'm going to buy Parler. Yeah, <laughs> and it does um, it does sort of align with some of the strange and uh, unsavory ideas that yes. he's been espousing recently. I'm not sure if that's connected. Yeah, um, pretty gross. Yeah, pretty gross. So yeah, not a fan of um, what's been going on yeah. over in Kanye Town recently. Pretty weird one. Pretty weird yeah. one. Yeah, um, weird is one way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, look, uh, we'll it'll be really interesting to see what comes of this yeah, so obviously sure. with the what like it's yeah it's hard <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine what where this goes i don't know um i can't i don't know if it was like if it's a serious bid if it's really possible that he will acquire it or if like he's got money like i don't know how much it's know. worth probably not a lot i don't know it's hard to say at various times he's claimed to be crazy rich and also broke yeah um neither would surprise me in a weird way neither yeah it's possible that both are true at the same time who knows yeah. but like like with the elon musk twitter situation you're right like i don't know if this is a real thing i don't know if this is some kind of like market manipulation thing i don't know if this is just like a pr exercise yeah. for him but I don't know. It honestly, it's like so random. It doesn't even feel like cohesive yeah. or deliberate. It's like a it's weird. Like, it's it's like a weird. I'm living in a weird parallel universe. Literally, like, it's like you wake how up, you see that happen? news, and you're like, "Am I?" <laughs> so I'm like going thinking on? back to when he like broke into the TMZ office. Well, not broke, but like went into the TMZ office and was just like yelling at people. Yeah. And I'm like, that seems so tame now. <laughs> I miss the fun hijinks. Yeah. You know? I miss the These fun hijinks. These hijinks are not fun. Yeah. Can't yeah, if you're watching Yeah, this. stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> just reel it in. Yeah. Reel it in. Um, but yeah, so look, I mean... Yeah, that's really it. That's the bottom line, really. Yeah, and that's how that's, that's how really crazy zany. that's how crazy wacky zany. Take tech a lie down, maybe have a nap. Yeah, and yeah. just like yeah, have a Panadol. Yeah, see if you a, feel better yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. It has. It's been nutty. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it's all been exciting, and um, you know, happy to do the work that we're doing, and happy to be here in front of this microphone making this podcast so yeah me too brother uh hopefully uh people <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed it and we'll be back next time next time we're actually going to be doing a Ooh, yeah. halloween edition spooky of the, <laughs> of the session tapes uh so we're gonna be talking about some tech privacy horror stories so if you know of any yeah Make sure Any that you let us know. Recommendations, reply. Uh, because in the we comments. are going to gather around the campfire, get our marshmallows, and like Cam said, yeah. tell them some horror stories. We're getting a torch under yeah. my head. These lights yeah. will be off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, all right. We'll see you next time, everybody. Adios.